to uh, you know, raise an awareness and uh, help for the protection with uh, an income uh, generation to the communities. But the Rwanda case for the revenue sharing came very recently, as you will see in one of our slides. Just to explain uh, where is Rwanda. Rwanda is uh, just below Uganda in the heart of, uh, in the heart of uh, Africa. And uh, Rwanda has uh, three countries. Up, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just push the right button. Up here, it's one of the portion of the, the Virunga Massif. We have uh, the Volcano National Park in Rwanda. And the other side here, you have the Virunga in DR Congo. And this is a portion of the Mgainga National Park. That's the home range for the mountain gorilla. Down here, we have uh, the largest Afro-mountain forest in Africa with uh, what we call the Park Nyungwe, which is uh, between, you know, on the crete of the Congo and the, and the Nile. And then we have uh, this uh, savanna type park. I'm not going through this rationale. I think uh, uh, Anne explained about, you know, the revenue sharing you know, on the community around the national park, you know, which is, can bring uh, support to the park you know, in terms of intervention, collaboration, in planning, you know, uh, undergoing the problem from the national park on crop breeding. Uh, they should also get direct benefits from national park, providing an enabling environment for good relationship with national park. That's how we thought that we could integrate the national park management and the conflict management. So that the revenue sharing uh, is an incentive to solicit their active role in conservation. The objective, as you know, and this was the, uh, explained, is to improve the socioeconomic livelihood and increase the community responsibility for sustainable conservation. The mechanism, and I think that's the most important thing for as a a way of sharing our experience. We in Rwanda are giving back to the community around the park 5% of the total revenue allocated to com the community project around the park. But we gave 40% to the what we call PNV, it means stand for Volcano National Park, where we have the gorilla. 30% to the Akagena National Park, we have, we have the Savannah type park in the eastern part, and 30% in the Nyungwe National Park. The principle is that the revenue sharing uh, is not a substitute to the traditional financial structure. It's, uh, the revenue sharing is a source for the development of irradiation. The structure of the revenue sharing is made by a, a committee. And the chair of the committee is what we call the chief park holder, CPW. There is also a representative from the district and the sector level, which are uh, those local entity on the local level. There is also a representative of what we call the CC partner NGOs, the community conservation partner NGOs. And of course, we have a, an implementation group. We do have criteria to select the project. And those are the criteria to select the project. One, of course, it's the proximity so that the people just directly around the park could benefit. The second thing is the feasibility because uh, the team select project and, uh, and uh, submit it to uh, the local authority and the park people. We look also forward on the sustainability. We also look on a positive impact on the national park conservation and, of course, the livelihood of the communities. We also involve the local participation if sometime when it should co-fund. We look also on the importance 
on the distribution and equity, and we'll see it in one of the table that I'll present very soon, and an impact. There is, of course, the integration of uh, RADB means Rwanda Development Board, which is the park authority and the district uh, plan. The main achievement that can be recorded up to now, as you could see, have been increasing. Our contribution from the 5% was 42 million, then 71 up to uh, 232 million a year recently. We have support infrastructure development, including school, health facilities, water supply. As uh, Augustin Basabose from uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo explained, water supply is a major problem around the Virunga Massif. Uh, and of course, you know, we do uh, build some uh, 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 rain water collection for the people around the park. We also intervene on the road and bridge. There is also a support to the local entrepreneurship, including the beekeeping, which is very uh, familiar if you know the region, not only around the, uh, the Volcano National Park in Rwanda, but also in Uganda and Congo. I need here to probably stress that we do have, you know, we, we are organized within the three countries with a, what we call a transboundary secretariat, who has been uh, facilitating uh, community around the park, you know, in terms of uh, support, uh, training, uh, funding, and one of them it's, for example, the community-based tourism that has been developed. We have this mushroom growing and uh, handicraft that we see not only in a volcano national park, but we can also see in uh, the the previous. Um, presentation. Those are some of, uh, uh, you know, uh, an example of uh, um, the 2010 project that were funded and the amount of money by million dollars. I want to stress more on a PNV, which stands by the Volcano National Park, where we had 69 projects, and this is the amount of money. And those are the sector, 12 sectors, so we intervene in the 12th sector and for the fourth district. And this is the total. This is a more exhaustive uh, list of uh, districts number of projects and amount. And here you have this graph that can show the sharing from 2005 when we start the revenue sharing with the Volcano National Park having the 40%, as you know, I explained, uh, Akagera with uh, less and uh, Nyungwe National Park where we have the, the chimp. This is in term of million of Rwanda and Frank. Here, it's a distribution by district from 2005 to 2010. Again, it's uh, in terms of million of uh, one and franc. And this is an example of category of project that have been funded through infrastructure, then agriculture, equipment. We do, of course, have uh, some challenges, and I think uh, we probably talk about the same thing. Uh, the first challenge, as you, you, I think you, you notice, is that we give 5% of the total, the, the total amount of money generating by tourism. We want to increase now, we are in the process of increasing, so we need to have a, a, a green light from uh, the high hierarchy. Uh, there's a little contribution compared to the demand. The process is delaying the dis disbursement because of the, the administration. There is an insufficiency of awareness from the beneficiary. 
There's an efficient collaboration from the local administration, low importance given to the revenue sharing project and to the conservation, because uh, the people from the local government look more for their development project more than uh, you know, the project that have, can have an impact on conservation. There is this uh, dual between the revenue sharing and the performance contract. The performance contract is a contract that every uh, public servant needs to sign. And of course, you know, the, those authority, local authority, tend to have those uh, uh, priority funded by this revenue sharing. We do also have uh, the problem between the revenue sharing and the compensation of wildlife damage. We still need for improvement for more satisfaction and, and uh, subsequent implication on awareness and collaboration. Need for complementary source of funding. We still uh, uh, call for our partner, uh, including uh, Gorilla Conservation, uh, International Gorilla Conservation Program. And of course, you need to learn from other experience. That's why I think we are here and we are learning. Thank you very much.